Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here with my partner, Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey. Hey. And I've got a really special guest today, a, a good friend, Alonzo Adams. Uh, we go way back to like the really early ARCC days. We were part of that core group of people that kind of got that uh, ball rolling. And, uh, you know, we could do a whole uh, whole hour talking about that, but we're not going to inflict that on you today. Um, Alonzo, you're currently the uh, chair of the, um, I guess, the committee for, for uh, residential cleaning, the house cleaning, cleaning committee for ISSA, formerly known as ARCC. Yeah, how exciting is that, man? You know, a lot of things going on. Um, a real uh, interesting time to be the chairman, you know, so never a dull moment, never boring. A lot of excitement, a lot of activity. And, and it, Alonzo is up in the Philadelphia area. His uh, company is uh, Busy Bee uh, Cleaning. Uh, how long have you been in the house cleaning industry? Man, you're going to make me uh, give up my age here. Well, you know, you start, I, mean, I, know, I know that you were an entrepreneur from a very, very young man, like uh, a child. I right? I yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was one of those young kid entrepreneurs that got out there when I was, you know, six and seven years old. Started started my hustle young, but uh, busy bee now. You know we're going in. We're at 28 years. So it's 28 years in the game. Um, I've been in the cleaning industry itself. Man, I've been in the cleaning industry ever since I was uh, 13, and I got into the cleaning industry with a, a large commercial cleaning company. So my background is actually commercial cleaning, but I I, I flipped over and started. You know jumped into the residential space and took off in that area. I mean, we still we still have, you know, our division here with commercial, N not as big as when we first started Busy Bee. The reason why we're Busy Bee Cleaning Company and we don't have like made in, in our name, maid service or anything, is because we were we were going to really just take off in the commercial way. And the uh, residential re residential was just like full steam ahead. And um, just it just seemed more interesting. The commercial thing, I guess, because I was in it so long, I just gravitated more to the residential. And 28 years later, here we are, huh? Yeah, it's a, it's a long time in the game. You know, of course, I do other things. You know, um, Busy Bee is, is one of my main focus. But, you know, I have uh, I have other uh, entities that I'm in. And that, that other in entities is also taking care of uh, property management of my one company, which is Uptown Venture Group. And then I'm an investor. You know, I'm a big investor into real estate as well as in, into the stock market itself. And, you know, and I do my thing with the speaking. Sure. And speaking and. Uh, yeah, that whole stock market thing. Sorry. Yeah. What? Wait, sorry. Did you, did you say yeah. sorry? I just bouncing back. No, I'm making money. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm making money. How does that not surprise you, though, Alonzo? I'm all in the green. Yeah, that's not surprising me at all. Yeah, <laughs> gotta make uh, gotta make money somewhere um, because it's been a little tough in the in the house cleaning business here recently, hasn't it? Yeah, you know it's been tough because um, you know when you look at when you look at what you were making last year in this business, <laughs> and you look at what you're bringing in now, there's definitely a big difference. And when you look look at uh, being down fifty percent, so we're down fifty percent right now. When we, when we actually got out of the game, when we took that brief pause for like two weeks, at that point, we were down 35%. So we have, you know, slowly worked ourselves up to 50%. And that was built off of building trust. So it's so funny that, you know, when you start this business, everything's about building trust, trusting, trusting uh, the customer to let you into their homes. Trusting that you know you're going to do things right, you're going to you're going to care for their home, and you're going to be a professional. It's the same thing. You're actually, you know, you're actually looking for trust from people you already earn the trust from because they want to know that you know what you're doing, and your people are trained. They have the proper equipment, the proper uh, uh, PPE. They they really want to feel that they can trust you to come into their home because, as much as your staff is scared. Some of the people, some of the cleaning owners are scared. The customers are scared, you know, because it's just so much uncertainty and a lot of fear. And it's trying to really diminish that. Or like I like to say, you know, I spoke in Vegas and so many people should have been there. They really should have been there. The topic was 
being fearless and unstoppable. And the one thing about fear is this. Fear, you know, I hear these things where people say, you know, fear is only in your mind. Fear does exist. It really does. Fear is true. But you have to learn how to move with fear. You don't let the fear paralyze you. You keep going forward. You keep doing what you need to do with the fear. And that's what owners are not realizing. You're going to have fear. You're going to feel it in your stomach. You might not sleep well, whatever. You got to find a way to move forward with the fear. And so, so does the, the public, the customer, the consumer. Is the, this thing is not going away tomorrow. It's not going away next month. We don't know, but we have to move forward. And the fear is going to be there, but operate and succeed and win. And, and what I keep telling people, all the people that I'm talking to is, listen, if you're not afraid, if you're not feeling at least a little bit of fear, Something's not right with you. <laughs> this is the time to be afraid. Of course, there's some fear. Of course, you're nervous. Of course, you're uncertain. Who cares? Oh, push it you away. Gonna, exactly. You gotta go. You, what are you gonna do? Yeah. You know, it's gonna be there, and you just gotta operate. But you know, here's the thing: we got so conditioned for so long. Things been going great. This has been a perfect time to be an entrepreneur, or I should say, a wannabe entrepreneur. You know. If you're a true entrepreneur, you've had to go through all kinds of different ups and downs and circumstances, and people thought you're crazy jumping into being an entrepreneur. You could have settled for a paycheck and got a job and got a nice retirement plan, but you decided to be an entrepreneur. Act like an entrepreneur. Understand what an entrepreneur is. Get that fire back. See, some people lost that fire a long time ago, and all they are now is business owners. That's what they are. They're business owners. They're not an entrepreneur at all. They're just someone that owns a business. An entrepreneur and a business owner is two different things, two different animals. And if you can go back to that route that really got you fired up and got you excited to get in business, look out. You know, you're, you're unstoppable. It, and I guess one of the things that we've been doing on this Facebook Live every day is talking about how, you know, this is this is the time. You know, everything's kind of a reboot. So we've got an opportunity to reinvent our businesses. So if we've lost that fire. We got to get it back. I mean, you know, this this isn't just going to fall in our lap. We've got to go out and, and get it. But you know, the opportunity. You know, we have an opportunity to be someplace much better than where we were before. That you know, this whole thing happened. If we make that happen for ourselves. Oh, I love this environment. I do. I mean, this 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 right here. You're you're in, you're in the you're in a uh, safari right now, and you got to decide what you're going to be. Are you going to be that? That lion, or you're going to be the gazelle. I'm a lion. I hunt, you know, and that's what I do, you know. And, and if I smell blood with my competition, if they're wounded, I'm attacking, you know, because I'm going to eat. And, and I don't, and I understand what Simon says about, you know, the leader eats last, but the lion eats first, <laughs> you know. But I'm not going to sit back and, and, and see, I'm not going to see my competition over there with clients because someone's cleaning houses right now. You know, okay. your competition is still out there, and I got to come get the clients now. So how do you how do you see this how do you see this all playing out, Alonzo? I mean, obviously, you know the, the 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 competitive forces are different now than what they were, say, three months ago. Moving forward, do you, do you see things changing in the marketplace, consumer preferences? Uh, you know, as as cleaning business owners who who have game who want to take advantage of these opportunities, what do we need to be doing right now? I think we got to change first. So that's the first starting point. When we change, then the perception changes. And I, and we have to be like, like Arxy. We have to be unified. We have to get on the same page and we have to have a unified message. And that's when we're effective because let's say, for instance, if we say that Arxy is the, the true professional representation, this is where the professionals are at then we need to have that message wherever plastered on the websites, on the cars, on the vehicles, but we all have to get involved and really do this and be and, and really be a part of the industry by putting it in the best light possible. Too many people are, are jumping into Artsy and saying, what, what can Artsy do for me? I, I, you know, I'm going to cancel my membership if it doesn't do something for me. How about what are you doing for the cleaning industry? And that's why I'm a part of Arxy. That's why I've been a part of Arxy is because we have to unify. And in numbers, that's where our strength and our power comes from. 
because you're not going to think that somehow the consumer, just because this happened, this is a foolishness of all of this. Just because this happened doesn't mean all of a sudden you become relevant. You become relevant because you have that type of influence and that power unified. You know, you have to represent this industry, not by individually being fragmented. You have to be unified to say, this is the industry. This is the place to be. So it's a shame that you just don't have any passion around this subject, Alonzo, that you're just so milk toast around it. <laughs> so we need to do the Seriously. thing. We got to do things within our own businesses. We need to be the leaders that, you know, our companies need us to be. But I'm, I'm hearing a higher message here as well. In addition to that, we have an obligation to, to, to the industry. Is, is that what I'm yeah, hearing? Absolutely. We do. If you're going to say you're a part of it. You're going to say you're, you're a professional company. What makes you a professional company? Yeah. You know, what makes you essential? You know, just because your state said you're essential, are you really essential? Yeah. Are you doing what's essentially needed? <clears throat> and, you know, I guess the part that, that, you know, a lot of people have a hard time getting their mind wrapped around is there's no immediate gratification for going that path. I mean, it's a long term play. You know, it's long term money, too. Yep. But you know, it's step by step. We're not just going to be seen by the public as, okay, now all of a sudden you are a professionals. We still have to make those steps to get there. But this environment right now is right for the opportunity right. for people to really take a look at us and say, huh, wow, I didn't even realize how important they are and how much they actually know and what a difference they're actually making in my life in our community in the world really so mm -hmm. i mean this this is this is our time there is never my mind from what i'm i've been in business 27 years and looking back i've never seen a time like this before where we had the, this huge opportunity to be not individually better, but to make our entire industry better. So there's a crack in the door, but nothing happens unless we push it open and walk through it. Yeah. We got to earn it. We got to take it because, see, we're sitting back yeah. and thinking just because this happened, you know, we deserve it. You don't deserve it. You have to no. earn it. And by earning it, you know what? Go get certified. Go, go, go take some classes. Get educated to, to be able to say you are professional and that you did earn it. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, Marsha's, uh, she's clapping. She's saying thank you. Leslie's agreeing. Yeah, and, and Leslie's like me, right? The virus has really invigorated her. I mean, you, you got to be careful where you say that. But in this group, it makes sense. But a lot of people are like, what? But no, can, for our industry, this is amazing. It, here's what happened is because their businesses caught the corona, you know? And so, <laughs> so you said you catch it as, as an individual. You catch the corona, right? Here's the thing that, that happened. One, your, your immune system wasn't good, right? So as a, as a business, your immune system wasn't good. That's why you caught the corona. And the other side of that is what, what is the actual um, survival rate for you once you catch it as a business? If you're not really in a strong position, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to get taken out. Yeah. So you have to have yourself fundamentally and your foundation correct to be able to survive and withstand this. Alonzo, I know you hear yeah. from a lot of cleaning businesses from, from, from all over the country, North America, you know, even other parts of the world. Do you see many uh, businesses? Are you hearing stories? Or are, you, are you being shared stories where – where people are struggling, going out of business. I mean, actually um, having, you know, some, pe some people's fears, I'm afraid, are actually becoming reality. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Are you, are you seeing that? People for, I'm seeing people that actually forgot to lock the back door. And when I say they forgot to lock the back door is that they didn't have things properly in place when this happened. Now this surprised us all, you know, you can't say we were prepared for this to that degree. But you didn't do the necessary things you needed to do to deal with an uncertain time. And what is that uncertain time? They always said, you know what? You should have at least six months saved up at, at a minimum to be able to handle your payroll, to be able to handle expenses. 
and people don't have reserves in their businesses. They don't have re, uh, reserves in their personal lives as into savings. Because I was just so so shocked when I when I when I just saw the statistic that when this happened, the average person only had five hundred dollars in their savings to deal with an emergency. That's it. Five hundred dollars in their account to deal with emergency. And so what I saw with with with, with these business owners in this industry, oh man, it was from payroll to payroll. And if something like that was going to occur, they were not prepared because some of them were just over leveraged and the money that they were bringing in was just not enough. So therefore, some of them didn't even price their services right. And they were just sinking so far ahead that they never properly laid their foundations. And what I always say, if I'm going to I build my kingdom and my kingdom is built with bricks. So you're going to try to come and come into my kingdom is built with bricks. Other people's is built with sticks and it's easily to collapse. That's, that's three little pigs, well, right? That's, that's right. That's yeah. right. Well, well, I can tell you, Alonzo, I was one of those people that was not as prepared as I should have been. When when this whole thing hit, I was like, well, okay, okay. I really should have been more prepared. I got complacent. I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, this business is easy. It's easy to do it, but it's easy not to do too. And so I, I got caught into in that. Um, and I know a lot of other people did as well. Uh, yes. what, I, what I want to say to that is, hey, don't throw in the towel just because you weren't ready and you weren't prepared. You're just going to fight a little bit harder. Yes, right. come with me. I'm just going to fight a little bit harder because I'm going to have to catch my little self up now. Yeah, so what? Yeah. It doesn't mean that you're down and out. You're not. You're not. You're not. It's not over. No. Until you say it's over. But you know what? If if yeah. some people do find themselves that, you know, there were some skills that that they were lacking or some things that they need to strengthen, this is the time, you know, because we, we've all got our butts kicking things. You know, we, we do. So what we do is we go back and we say, I need to work on this. I need to strengthen myself in these areas because you took you, you, you got your butt kicked. You took a butt whooping, you know, and I saw this happen. As we say with owners, I saw owners that started to not be engaged anymore. And, you know, Liz, you know this just from with employees. We're always talking about employee engagement. That's the biggest yeah. thing business owners want to talk about. How about owner yeah. engagement? How about yeah. that? You know why? Because yeah. the owners, the owners are disconnected. Your staff sees it. They feel it. They know you're not engaged, but you're worried about them being engaged. Yeah. You know? But you they, know what? I, I think that's a tricky one though, Alonzo, because people get they get confused. They think owner, if I'm more engaged, oh, I don't want to work that hard. You don't yeah. have to work six hours a week to be engaged. You just gotta be paying attention. You just got to have your your thumb on the pulse of what's going on. And engagement isn't doesn't equate to time. You don't have to be afraid of, of being too engaged in your business because you don't want to work that hard. That's not what it's about. Right. Um, yeah. And, it's, so, and, um, and some people just disconnected from it or they, they've been in it so long. And you've heard this, Tom, you've heard this. You know, I just don't want to be involved with it like that, you know. Right. You know, they, they just don't. They're trying to find every way possible to escape it, to run away from it, to just put it in the back, you know? Yeah. And, and, and at the same time, though, there's that low level of discontent. They're not happy with the outcomes that they're getting. Or they're fear. Not, you know? Yeah. They got that low level of fear. We know a few people that, you know, can't, can't even think about looking at their finances. That, that just gets a little little scary there. They get we got a couple of comments. I love what Leslie's got going on here. She added a full page on her website with all her new credentials and certifications, including the COVID class, arts membership. Awesome. I love that. Smart. Yeah. I'm doing it too. Riley, if you're on this Facebook Live, jump on that for me, all right? And Denise says we're in the same room. Um, she's been saving for the Profit First Method. Oh, you know what? We just um, in our MMA groups. We are. We read a, a book and we implement the book each month. And this month's book is Profit First. We had a different book on the agenda, but this is again one of those things. You gotta, you gotta strike while the iron's hot, right? Right now is the time to jump on Profit First if you're not doing it. So both of my groups, Profit First. Everybody's already got their bank account set up. You know, you know why? You know why that's so important? Because here's the big thing, and 
in our scene has always been that someone gets impressed because someone's a million dollar business. I'm never impressed. I'm never impressed. You know why I'm not impressed? Because just because the business gets to a million dollars, that does not mean you're making money. I've seen so many of these people that have a million dollar business. They're not making any money, you know? So honestly, I, I, I love the profit first thing. I love about profit. But, you know, I go to the, I go to the, all the way to the extent, cash. I love cash. Cash is king. So when, when someone can tell me about their cash, that to me, man, you're in a whole different universe. When you can say, I paid for that with cash, that's money in the bank to me, baby. Yeah. You, know, you pay I for- I think we had somebody on here, Kimberly Ann. She's a, she's a cash gal, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, how many, how many times have you uh, gotten back from your CPA and you hear about, you know, all this profit you've made, but this balance sheet type stuff and you're looking at your bank account. It's like, it doesn't look like I made any money. <laughs> so at the end of the day, if it's not green, if you can't hold it and put it in the bank and buy stuff with it, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's the ultimate test, isn't it? But everybody's trained to look at the bank account, and the bank account is not what you should be looking at because majority of that money is already already is you know is called for. You already know what it's going towards. Sorry for tax payroll, whatever. So if you start to gauge by looking at your bank account, man, you're already losing. But you know what? The reason why that happens to people is because when you're small, you can look at the bank account. Because the cash is flowing and you don't have all those big expenses and th there is money. You, 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 haven't, you haven't grown to a place. But if you keep doing that as you grow pretty soon, <laughs> there is no money in that bank account. Mm -hmm. That number's red more than it's black. Mm -hmm. And that's not, not what you want to be doing. Yeah. But even if, it's green, even if it's green, the only problem is, is that it's accounted for. You know, yeah. so much of that money is accounted for. We yeah. track, uh, we have a cash flow tracking in our MMA accounts and we don't push it in the beginning. We just have these five measures that we track regularly. And the first basically is profit. Um, and But everybody's tracking cash flow. About a month, two months in, people are like, hey, <laughs> this cash flow thing, that actually is showing me something way different than I thought. Yeah, you got to watch that that little graph right there. That really matters. So yeah, yeah. you're right. Cash is king. Cash is king. Big time. I, I also love that about the profit first method though. I do love that they say income minus profit equals expenses. I love that. Right? Yeah. You got your income, take out your profit first. What's left over, that's what you have for expenses. Don't spend more than that because you don't have more than that. I think that's great. I mean, it's so simple, but so powerful. And yeah, it's so uh, for some people to comprehend. Yeah. Uh, Leslie, debt-free. Savings is baller. Yes. Yes, it is. I agree, Leslie. Uh, Alonzo, so, you, um, Alonzo I, you spent some time on a, uh, uh, I guess it was a webinar earlier today with, with some of the... Uh, RC uh, partners? Yes, we actually had uh, uh, Elena Lado on and we had Carrie Knight. And um, it was it was it was it was a heck of a call. You, what you know, did you do? Well, you had some power players on there, and we basically again we discussed um, you know, pre-corona and post-corona and moves that we were all making in our businesses, as well as how we're dealing with all the different challenges and uncertainties. And just really just have the right mindset because mindset is just so powerful. And yeah. we spent time on that because some of that mindset thing, it frees people. And when I look to inspire people, you know, um, and I'm not this motivational guy. So that's not that's not what I'm about. I, I'm, I'm not into trying to motivate anybody. I'm inspiring people. But fundamentally, I'm a powerhouse as an entrepreneur. But I do understand that the mindset thing is what I need to attack first. You know, you can have these other skills and everything and you can know how to market. You can know how to sell. And that's why a lot of people do. They come to the convention or they're looking for how do I market better? How do I do this better? Or how about I bring my staff where they can learn this? No. How about you get your mindset right? You know, because 
if your mindset is, is, is powerful and it deals with all these challenges, uncertainties, employees quitting, customers scared, you have the ability to weather the storm and deal with what has to be dealt with right in front of you and blow it and blow right through it. And the people and you know that is true. Go ahead, Tom. No, I'm just the people who weather the storm, there's not gonna be as many people on that side as it was before the storm started. So there's a lot of rewards to be reaped by by you know sucking it up and fighting through and, and making it to the other side. That's right. That's why that mind mm -hmm. got to be right because you got to be careful what you're feeding it. You know, you got to be careful of that that me that mental talk. You know, my mental talk is always I, I got phrases and I live by those phrases ever since I've been younger. It's, it's like you know what phrases like it is what it is. You know, phrases like I got to do what I got to do. Just little phrases like that, and I just go through anything or deal with whatever I have to deal with just by those simple phrases. You know, it is what it is. You know. This isn't going away, and I got to deal with this. You go take me, and you go put me in a in a third world country. I'm still going to find a way to make money. You know, I'm still going to find a way. There's no way I'm going down. I'm 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 that type of person. I'm built like that. That's my DNA. And and you know it's true about mindset because you can see two companies in the exact same city. One company is saying there's no no work here my clients won't pay me more than thirty dollars an hour uh, these trunk slammers are killing me i'm never going to be able to do anything three miles down the road you got another company saying ah, business is booming are you kidding me i raised my prices twice in the last six months i had to do it again i don't even know what well, what's going on where's the boom coming from right that's, what it is. that's all mindset you guys know from when, whenever you're consulting with people, you can teach them everything. You can teach them how to do all, do this business, you know, from top to bottom. But if that mindset's not right, they don't have the right the uh, the right um, tangible tangibles they need to be that that power player, be resilient. Then it doesn't matter what you what you know. It just doesn't. You're gonna be able to hold up. So and I have a, I have a secret phrase that I listen for. When I'm, when I'm coaching with somebody, more than when I'm consulting, but when I'm coaching with somebody, I listen for this phrase. I already tried that, or I already did that. And those, either one of those phrases is my clue that oh, we got a heavy lift here. Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot of work to do because until you change that, nothing else is gonna change. Yeah. You yeah. gotta change that first. The the one the one I love the most is, but you don't understand my situation is different. You know, you've seen my little my little pig butt, right, Tom? So I got a little I've got a little card that has a pig butt on it. It's like on a card stock. Uh -huh. I have a few of them, and then somebody says, "Yeah, but you don't understand." Yeah, but I fling on the card. <laughs> you you keep your butt. <laughs> I know all about the buds, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. There was somebody, uh, Leslie wanted to know, was that a Hot Topic Tuesday call that you were on today, Alonzo? Yes, and it, it, it's actually, is, uh, it was recorded. So um, uh, she can it record it, recording, and it was it was a great recording. That's great. I'm going to go in and watch that, too. I was, Tom was working me like a dog all morning long. I didn't have a chance to, to uh, get on a Hot Topic Tuesday call. I'm going to be watching that. You know, I, I, I don't think I have worked as hard as I have since this whole coronavirus thing started in such a long time. And I work hard. I mean, it's not like that I ever like goof off, but I mean, this is true. Jerk. Me too. I mean, days, days are moving now, you know? It's just like, wow, what day? Yeah. <laughs> no, day, I mean, daylight's oh, burning. Linda. You got to be, now is the time to be making it happen. There's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll rest and, you know, have some fun a little bit later. But right now we got to, we got to make it happen. Oh, this is all offense, man. You know, it's offense. You know, that's where, you know, I was in the defense when things were going great. I'm on the offense now, you know, I'm just looking to score. Uh, you know, everybody needs to listen to that too. If you're out there still thinking, how am I going to handle this? What am I going to do? How am I going to respond? How am I going to react? Then you're in defense. And while you're there, 
you're you're getting trampled. People are walking over you. You don't even see it, but other businesses are taking over your market. So you got to get yourself out of that mindset. You got to get out of defense and you got to go forward. You got to get into offense. So that's, that's you're so right. You're so right. Um, you know, when I I when I used to do music, you know, I used to produce. That's why I was a music producer. So I produced songs. And, you know, I was young. I was a young man doing this in my teens. And I always thought about, I was working two, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, creating songs. But I was like, you know what? I got to do this because there's somewhere, someone, somewhere in another state that's up doing 10 songs and I'm just doing one. Someone's mm -hmm. always looking out, hush, out, hustle you and take what you got or get what you're after. You got to push. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, I, uh, well, let's see. We got a couple of things here. Uh, uh, Linda posted some information. If you are um, needing more information about your PPP forgiveness, check out. You're going to have to do a search, but there is a webinar on the PPP in Richmond, Virginia. So do a search for that. Um, it looks like Leslie's going to Leslie's working 10 hours straight so far today. Uh, Sarah, looking forward to some downtime, but never been so busy playing games. Yep, good job. Uh, I, I think everybody's just, you know, working it. And a lot of us are working it and enjoying it. And the other group is working it and being dragged down. Come on, get on this side, y'all. It's much better. Get on the side of looking for the future and what's going on. And that's the trick. If you're looking for how to shift your mind, right? If you're struggling, you're like, yeah, but I, this, all this stuff, all these things, here's the trick. This is how you do it. Think about the future. The future can get you there faster than thinking about the past. I haven't um, started to do I haven't started the date list. Can I, can I say it? It, I'm ready, Tom. This is an unprecedented event. We have never seen anything yeah. like this in our lifetime, nor will we ever see anything like this again in our lifetime. Right. Don't miss it. Yeah. Don't miss this opportunity. Yeah. Now, don't miss it. I love that. Don't shut the door. Right. right? Don't don't just close the door on this opportunity. Like Kick it down. Said. Kick that door down and go Push for it. In. it. You, you know, it, yeah, it's, the, this it, is it. it's the one thing is that, you know, what has happened is, you know, it's been a, been a tragedy for, for lives that were lost. And, um, you know, yeah. we hopefully our hearts go out to those people and their families. But as this thing was happening, you know, I'm just thinking about some of the things we have been through. You know, we've been through the housing crisis. We've been through 9-11. You know, I've been through the, the dot-com crashes and all these different things. But I know there was always people that were uh, were sitting in a position where they could have capitalized and could have made enormous amount of money or found enormous amount of opportunities if they would have just put their best foot forward and got the, got got stuck out of the place that they were in because so many people got their heads down. It's time to get your heads up. You know, looking down, it's nothing down. It's time to look up. You know, and it's time to think about what's my next move. And the next move has to be the right move because there's some people just making moves to make moves. And I'm not one of those people that just j jump out there to make a move to make a move. It needs to be strategic. It needs to be calculated. It needs to be throw thought out when you make that move. You know? So I'm not going to. Everybody's drinking. Yeah. Alonzo, you got to show us what you're drinking. Everybody wants to know what's being done right now. What you well, drinking? It's supposed to look like a margarita. <laughs> That's right. This it is like cold 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 cold. Cold. It's, a, it's a little darker. So what it really is is a kombucha. That's what it is. Is a, a natural green oh, kombucha. Kombucha? Yeah, because mm -hmm. I, 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 I love kombucha. Yeah, I don't drink. So you know, this is what it is. I've never, never been a drinker. But you Not know, me either. You know. We've been through, you know, a lot, you know, all those, you know, events that that uh, disrupted the the economy and, and and created problems. I mean, this is an unprecedented event in a lot of ways. A lot of ways. None of those other events, 9/11, uh, dot com crash, uh, the housing crisis, did small businesses like ours even get a nod from the federal government. 
think about the money that they're giving yeah. companies like ours. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people out there. You know, the government wants us to succeed. I mean, I've never experienced anything like this. Yeah, because yeah. I think we missed. I, and so I, I wanted to make one point real quick. I just want to make one point real quick. We are talking about what a great opportunity this is and how you got to move forward and push and it's great and blah, blah, blah. Um, all of that stuff and all of that is true. But we're not saying take advantage of anybody else. No. We're not saying take advantage of this. But we're not in a bad way. We are saying take advantage of this opportunity to do and be the most, the best that you can, but it doesn't mean step on other people. That's not what we're saying. We're not, we're not recommending, we're not saying this is the time to crush everybody. Now, friendly competition moving forward, as, or maybe not even friendly, but you know, it, it, there is some competition in our industry. Yeah, we're, we're not, we're not saying that this is, awesome that this happened and who cares about all the bad stuff we're not we're not about that what we're saying is sometimes when you have lemons there's no discounting that they're lemons but you have a choice when you have lemons make lemonade or just complain about how sour they are so we're not saying they're not sour we're not saying they're lemons but you got to do something so go with the lemonade yeah, you you, you got to you know how long you want to stay in a certain location, you know. At some point, you got you got to move on from that location, you know. And some people are, are are finding ways to stay there. I'm looking for all the ways to move out of that, you know. It, it, I got to be around the right people. I got to be around the right energy. And there's things I just got to shut down. That media, that's a bunch of noise. If you stay, you stay locked into that. You're getting a lot of mixed messages. And, it, and that message changes on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. I see people that are thriving are people that have said, I'm going to shut it off for a while. And people that are careful about how much they're engaging into their investing their time into social media, they're moving forward. So we got to understand what are the things that will really take us down or keep us from moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. I don't, you know, I look. I don't need to see that 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 body count ticker. I really don't, you know, because if you're going to put that ticker on there, put that ticker on there all year long. You know, when this goes away, keep the ticker up there. Why is the ticker up there? And some people are fixated on this type of news that I understand is reality. But I do understand that there's things that drag people down and it doesn't uplift them or help them move forward. No, yeah. it's a there's some value in just having an awareness as to what's going on in the world. I mean, cause we do as CEOs, we have to, we're, we're, we're the chief strategists. Okay. So we have to develop a strategy and we need data to do that. But what Alonzo is saying is, you know, you don't have to live it all day long. Just no. Stick your head up every once in a while. I don't get hyper focused on that. Right. Right. That's right. not where you want to be putting your, all of your focus. Keep an eye on it. Exactly. You need to know the numbers getting better, numbers getting worse. What's happening in my local community? What's happening in DC? What you know? You, you got to know that, but that's a small part. You know, that's that needs to be a yeah. sliver of what you're doing with your time. If that's all you're doing with your time, you're wasting your time. Yeah, it's going to paralyze. Yeah. You, you know, and then you're yeah. just looking for more of it, and then you're looking for more validation. Then you're looking at the sources. Is this true? Is that true? Maybe this is happening. And then one, 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 one week you're doing one thing, the next week you're doing something different. The next month you're telling your staff this, then you're telling them we're not doing that. It's like, come on, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing? And so I'm gonna point something out too. So for those of you that are finding yourselves, you, like, you keep getting sucked into this thing. Go out there, get yourself some help. So I have always had a business coach. I know Tom, Alonzo, both of you guys also have always had a business coach. Yeah. But you might have noticed me talking more about my business coach recently on these calls. That's because I kicked it up. I'm seeing my business coach every week right now because I need to stay focused on the big picture. I need to make sure that I'm working toward what I want to be working toward and I'm not getting sucked in. To this stuff all of the drama and all of the rhetoric and you know all just there's so much 
you know, keep yourself on track. What's it going to take for you to make sure that you stay on track? Um, we have a lot of great comments on here. Marsha, also, don't bring yourself out. It's a long haul in front of us. Be strong, be truthful, and be resilient. Yes. Hallelujah right there, right? Self-care. Right now, you gotta you got to take care. Uh, Richard is saying, Alonzo nailed it. Absolutely. Alonzo always brings it. You know, we did not plan on this uh facebook live going down this path y'all but <laughs> i mean we should have known because every time you're talking with alonzo it goes down this inspirational path that's and how we're it really, is and we're really lucky to have alonzo i mean he's a he's got a lot going on and a lot of times for, for, for these facebook lives i'll reach out to somebody and say yeah you know i'll be there at five i ask alonzo you want to do one of these things he like looks at his calendar i asked you what like two three weeks ago <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, dang i was kind of thinking and he said, yeah, May 5th. yeah i've been i've been so booked up i was like again you know i was at one uh at one o'clock with arxy and then yesterday i was on another one with issa and it's just you know you're pulling in so many different directions, but it's just giving back. And you know what just makes us feel great in this time is when we're dealing with all this and what you guys are doing is is phenomenal. It's just giving back to to help other people feel good and let them know is that you know what you can do it. You just got to find a way. You just got to settle yourself down. You got to have confidence. The confidence is key. You got to lead your people. Your people are looking at you. They're looking to see are are you shook. Did this shake you? I mean, are you standing tall? Are you standing standing on your morals? I mean, and your family's looking at you. Your kids are looking at you. How are you coming home? Is your head down? You know, you are you um, are you a person that's given the right energy? You know, you got to really think about these people that need you. So this is more of a time of giving, and that's what's in, is giving and just a gratitude because I am very thankful that you know. Again, I was in a very good position when this when this happened. And I'm, I'm just, I have gratitude, but I want to give back. I want to help others. I mean, I took phone calls from all over the country and some people were shocked when I said, call me. Cause I, I could, I could, I could get the fear. They, they, they DM me on Facebook or they reached out with a message. I could just sense the fear and I, and I call them and they're shocked that there's like, I can't believe that, that, that you call me. It's just the thing that we got to do for each other and help each other build each other up and help each other know that, you know what, things are gonna get better. Things are gonna get better. It may be a slow process, but they're coming. And just be ready and set and have yourself set up to succeed. Be the leader, yeah. that, be the leaders that your people need you to be because everybody's looking for help. Everybody's looking for, for leadership. The door's wide open, unprecedented event, yeah. take the opportunity. A absolutely. And Tom, I know you have to, I know you have some stuff that you need to be sharing, but I also wanted uh, I, I wanted a daily call. Uh, who's getting fireworks today? Who got their PPP money or who got their idle money? Come on, tell us you got some money. Let's get y'all some fireworks going on here. And Tom, I know that um, we're talking about, oh good. Oh, is Lendio opening back up again? Or is this just info? No, this is, the, the, the questions come up you know, yesterday, it's like, well, what can I do with my idol money? And the rules for idols a lot broader than it is for the for the PPP, because I mean, it's a loan. It's not going to become. I mean, after the first ten thousand dollars, the rest of it you're going to have to pay back over thirty years at a at a relatively low interest rate. The best deal you're ever going to get in terms of borrowing money, by the way. But uh, the link that I that I shared in the chat goes over. You know what. Uh, they're sharing with us here that you can do with your idle money. And basically um, it's help, you know, to support small business uh, during the disaster funds to cover necessary day-to-day -day expenses, uh, payroll accounts payable. So if you think about what, what's accounts payable, it's anything that you normally write a check for that you pay out of your business. Okay. Sick leave to employees, uh, that's showing increased cost to obtain materials. I guess during a time like your PPE, stuff like that, you're paying a lot more for that now than, than, than what, what you used to because of supply chain issues, your space costs. It sounds like reading this, as long as you aren't like jamming in your pocket or, or spending it on yourself personally, you can spend these monies on just about anything that you would normally 
spin for out of your business, which uh, is a pretty good deal, I would say. No kidding. Hey Tom, who was the who was um? Let's see. There was somebody that people were applying with, and they were getting approved for their monies within 24 hours. Do you remember who that was? We had some good luck with cabbage over the weekend. That's who it was, cabbage. So Rosemary, um, I know you're still in waiting mode with Chase, but hit up cabbage. If you get that faster, you can just not accept anything coming through with Chase. But if you're sick of waiting, especially those of you with the big banks, cabbage yeah. is, is good. I've also heard um, pay, uh, PayPal? PayPal was PayPal? coming through for a lot of people. Uh, Square? Yeah. I hadn't heard about Square, so. Yes. So don't don't just sit and wait. If you if you want your money, take take another step. Do something more. You know, give give it another shot. By the way, Rosemary, I saw you not last night. Not sure what night it was on Debbie's event. You rocked it, lady. Great job, and you look good too. Uh, that, that was a, that was a great event. Uh, Carol, woohoo! Got your PPP and your idle advance. Good job, Carol. I know you're happy. Um, can I expand my business by buying cars, marketing, or acquiring another business? Sarah wants to know, Tom. Certainly you can. Now, are you asking that in the and context of using business. idle money for that or just as a strategy? As a strategy, absolutely. Um, I would talk to my accountant before buying automobiles because that's not an expense that's like a capital investment and that might not I, I i don't know from from reading what's up on the screen here i wouldn't be comfortable uh saying it that's uh that that would be within the in in the rules i would i would talk to my accountant about that now if you went okay. out if, if you went out and maybe leased a car or went to a, a dealership and financed a car and you were making the monthly payments against that car out of your, your idle funds, that might look a little bit better. You know, if you got a chunk of money and go out and drop, you know, 30 grand on a car out of your idle money, that might not fly, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just sharing with you the, 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 the rules that, that, that we were able to find. That's why you have an accountant. They know how to answer those questions better than we do. Hey, Leslie has a question. It's a little off topic, but she says it's important to her. And you know what? Uh, I don't know anybody that's been more supportive of us than Leslie. So let's help her out here. Um, let's see. Is there any official recommendation regarding wearing a mask while doing house cleaning or janitorial work? She's hoping that she can cite info to not wear a mask. They're so hot, difficult to work in. You got anything, Tom? Is this something we might have to tell it like it is, or oh. any ideas? I guess for a lot of a lot of the uh, stuff that we did, telling it like it is, a lot of the a lot of the uh, information that we share are is coming from the recommendations of the Center for Disease Control, and the CDC is recommending that uh, we wear masks when we're in public for the benefit and protection of other people. A mask doesn't really protect us that much, like a cloth. Uh, mask, but if we happen to uh, have have the infection, but for asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic, then the likelihood of us infecting someone else is diminished by by wearing a mask. So that's the the reason, the logic, and the and, and the recommendation behind that. So, um, sorry, Leslie, I, I don't know, you know, yeah. I don't, I don't know if there's anything out there that, that contradicts what the, what the CDC is, is saying or not. Let me take that back. I'm sure there is, but from a credible source, I think most credible sources are saying that the responsible thing is for us to wear masks in public for the benefit of other people. You know, the one thing about the mask- And we feel your pain, Bridget. It's about- it's All about three of us wear glasses. What type of mask you're actually dealing with as well. Because some are heavier than others. So if you can find like a lighter material, of course, that's not going to be as, as much as um, as hot as it would if you have heavy material. Also, if you have it not smushed against your face, if you have a little bit of a gap there, it's much better as well. Right. Um, uh, are your cleaners wearing masks to work? Uh, ours are. How about y'all? Are you guys yeah. cleaners wearing masks to work? Uh, our, our staff is. 
when 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 our you know when we show up at the office we need to be wearing a mask and um you know it's till, till your day is over and you're in your car going home you need to be wearing a mask that's our sop yeah us too and marcia yeah plus be an example yep we we do have to be an example for our people right don't walk out into a meeting and you're the only one not wearing a mask mm -hmm. and telling everybody else they got to wear their mask that's that's not going to get you where you want to go. And you know you can't sip your coffee when you're wearing a mask, so it's uh, very true. But you can lift up, take a sip, look back. I yeah. know, done it. And they got these fancy metal straw things. They work really, really well. Uh, yeah. Also, Kevin says they are um, to help you with touching your mouth and nose, which would you know the entry points. Yep, they are for yep. that too. That's a good point. Yeah, no one comes into a Rosemary's place without a mask. That's great. Gloves, washing hands. Absolutely. So, Tom, um, it's getting kind of late. I know that um, we need you to talk a little bit about the um, program that we're putting on right now, the PHC program. Uh, I know that you guys need to know about this because today is Tuesday. The big discount and tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is noon Eastern. So, very little time. Today is the last day, really. I mean, you have less than 24 hours at this point in time to get this program. Tom, can you give us a quickie? Yeah, real quick. Just moderncleaning.com, professional house cleaning program. Uh, it's a seven class program. Each class is roughly an hour. The first class is gonna go live tomorrow at noon Eastern, nine o'clock Pacific. The other six classes will be coming out over the month of May. So by the end of the May, all seven classes will be there. There's a 50 question exam at the end. Once uh, you know, the student passes that 50 question exam, they get a certificate of completion showing that they've passed the professional house cleaning program. Um, we've talked about professionalism and professionalizing the industry. You know, we've been about that for, for a long, long time. That was really- All three of us. At the, all of us have. I mean, that was what RT is about. Back, yeah. in, it always has been. And professionalism is for the benefit of of everybody. Your 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 clients win. You win as a business, as a business owner. Your 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 cleaning professionals win. You've got better jobs if they're professionals. And you know, we talk about how typically. We hire people to fill jobs, and and your 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 technicians start off with, hey, you know, I got a job, and the bar for that job is usually relatively low. But there's an opportunity to grow from that with developing skills and knowledge and understanding the why behind we do certain things, and it's a lot more important than just teaching somebody how to read a label on a bottle. I mean, there's so much more involved. I mean, you've got surfaces, you've got Certainly, your chemicals. You got the soils that, that you're you're removing in a home. You've got the pathogens that that live in those soils that you've got to deal with. You've got various types of equipment and all of those entities. When you start mixing and matching, I mean, you think about how complicated it really can be to clean a home. And this is the kind of thinking that a true professional would have with with that knowledge. And once you have that, you know. You, you've got more trust with your clients. It's not just a job anymore. It's a profession. Uh, your, your, your cleaning professionals feel completely different about their job. I mean, it's a, it's a virtuous circle. I could go on and on, but the whole program and the exam's probably eight hours, but it's all gonna be online in the learning platform and it's gonna be awesome. It's one of the most epic things I think that we've ever done. And it's got bulk discounts. so. If you're buying groups of, of, of seats, you can get anywhere from 50 to and 15 to 50 percent off, depending on how many you're getting. And like Liz said, between now and noon tomorrow Eastern time, you can get an additional 50 percent off of that. The uh, rack rate for the class is ninety nine dollars. So if you get a bunch of seats between uh, before uh, noon tomorrow, you can get them for, for less than twenty five uh, dollars a seat. And you just uh, go in here to PayPal and I mean, go in here to uh, this link here and click the cart and sign up and buckle up and get ready uh, to, to, to get started tomorrow afternoon. I wanted to um, talk about something. I haven't talked to you about this, Tom, so I hope this doesn't um, 
Um, <laughs> I hope it's not a problem. We'll just say it, Liz. <laughs> All right. So yesterday we had somebody that reached out to us that was not happy with the certificate that she received on our COVID-19 program. And I, I wanted to just be really clear for everybody here that the certificate is not the offering. For us, this program, the education is the offering. The, the certificate is just something to give you a, a, a little bit of a, a personal feeling of, okay, yay, I did it. Uh, it, it's not meant to, it's, that's not what you're buying. That's not what the $99 is. The $99 is for your peace of mind, your education, your confidence, your ability to go out into the world and make a difference. But it's not that piece of paper. For the people, for the people that are cleaning homes for your businesses, I guess it's really important to point out this class is designed for the people who are cleaning homes every day. And do you want them to be looking at it as a job or do you want them to be looking at it as a profession and as professionals? And it's a journey. I mean, this class was a great start, but you know, it's not the destination, but it's, 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 it's a big, big step in the right direction. And if we do things like this and invest in, 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 in our team members in, in, in ways like this, you know, we're building that future. We're, we're, we're pushing that door open and taking advantage of the opportunities. And so you need time. You know, a lot of us have PPP monies and, you know, training, especially the, the idle money. You could pay for all of this. At the very least, you can use the PPP monies to pay for the salaries for the people that are, are would be taking the program. And that's more of an investment than, than the class itself by a fair amount. So um, now's... now's oh, yeah. I have to say, too, that we had a lot of people tell us, you guys, why are you pricing that so cheap? That should be a five to six hundred dollar program. It's it's too big to be so cheap. Why is it so cheap? People have money now. They're getting their idol. They've got their PPP. You need to be charging. Our, our thought was the opposite. Our thought is we need to cover our costs. We need to be able to make this um, something that everybody has access to remember we really want to professionalize the industry and until everyone has this information this education the chances of that happening are slim so this is our opportunity also the opportunity for us to get that message out widely to all of the the technicians that are out there the cleaning professionals right so Again, sorry, soapbox. Liz's yeah. soapbox right there. But ah, that's it's, that's why it's so inexpensive. You, it, don't get don't get sucked into the idea of you know you get what you pay for. In this case, we're only giving it to you at this price because we want everyone to have it. Everyone. Uh, will an email be sent to? to you before the class starts tomorrow uh, robin oh yeah robin already bought um his seven classes so robin no there won't be an email sent out um because it's not a live class it is online H how exactly will they know when it goes live tom how, how is that whole thing going to work there will once it's up and live uh you'll be getting information on like your your login so at that point i guess if you've done the bulk uh if you if you've self-enrolled then you log in the way that, that that you normally do and then the class will be there if you, you do it afternoon tomorrow and if you've done the uh, bulk purchase you'll be getting information tomorrow with the information you need or your your people that that you signed up that will uh, give them the ability to uh, to log in. They'll be getting an email. Uh, so if you registered, you are going to get an email. If you didn't register, we're not going to say, last chance, five more minutes, one no. more hour. That's not happening, y'all. You're not going to see us again until tomorrow at our normal time, 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific, and it will be too late for the discount, okay? So we have to cut it off at some point in time because the resources have to be there. This is a lot more work than it seems like. 
All right, Tom. Um, perfect. Yay. Who do we contact with names of employees when you register? There's a, a list that will populate that you fill in. Is that right, Tom? Yeah. Part of the part of the purchase process, uh, the instructions will give you a link. You'll click on that link. It'll download a template. It's, a, it's an Excel spreadsheet and it'll tell you basically you give people's names and their email addresses and you'll send it back to us to the email that we, we give you and, and we upload it from there. And then everybody, everybody on that list will get an email to the email that was was on that list. And yes, to your question, Leslie, it is like the HCT, but it is directed at technicians, um, what, what we call cleaning professionals, professional house cleaners. And there is, um, um, uh, 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 I, I would say it is presented more directly to your cleaning professionals so that it's it because it's directed to them and not going through the owner owner to them it's more easy to absorb easier to absorb i know there was a better way of saying that it's much easier to absorb because it's coming directly to them the message is designed for them uh, Robin wants to know, so I need to register for the class? So I guess, yeah, you do, if you want to take it. Yeah, that, um, that's how you pay for it. When you pay for it, you register, the whole thing happens at once. Debbie is asking about um, Poison Balk. Um, did not see, there's a, spreadsheet that uh, was part of the instructions that, that you would need to download. And if you uh, didn't get that, send us an email. It's uh, basically mail at moderncleaning.com and, and we'll get that to you. Or you can hit us and up. And Leslie, on. know this. I'm sorry, Tom, I, I thought you were done. No, you're good. Okay, um, Leslie, the focus is not on COVID for this this is definitely uh more more general if you go to uh, moderncleaning.com there are two boxes that are going to pop up the one on the right if you click on it don't worry you're not going to pay right there but it'll it'll show you what's on what's in the program it'll show you everything a lot of people are signing up for the, the covid class as well it's a three-hour class and it's focused on one thing and one thing only, things that cleaning professionals need to know to clean in the COVID-19 world. And uh, we've got a lot of great feedback for this. And, you know, I think that we've tipped past a thousand people that have taken this program. Yay. Uh, Bridget wants to know, Tom, she hasn't turned in her list yet. Is it okay to wait for all seven to be out before registering employees? That's, that's, that's fine. The, uh, the, the seats are, are good for, for, for 90 days once you've, once you've purchased. So you've got 90 days to get them to sign or use to, to get their names and give us the, uh, the template and we'll upload it. And you need to get them through the program within 90 days, but you know, 90, the 90 days doesn't start till tomorrow. So you've, you've got time. Just make sure that you purchase them by then, you guys. That that's the part that I'm really. You know, to people sure are going to be mad. People are going to be mad at us when they come back. You know, the, the following day and find out that it's going to cost twice as much. And you know, you're going to get grief. I'm going to get grief. You're going to get grief because I'm going to pass all my grief on to you, Tom. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to sigh by right that grief. I can take it, Alonzo. Uh, Linda. Thank you for, for joining us. Um, any any last words you want to share with our group? Um, this this was fun, you know, and um, I enjoyed you know our collaboration together. This is the first the three of us have done something uh, in a collaboration like this, so uh, it, it was fun. And definitely, you know, anyone that was on that was on you know a part of this, it's just you know keep moving forward, you know, um, stay strong and, and just be resilient and. Um, you know, just keep hope and and and, and believe. You know, you, you got to have something that you believe in, and um, you know, find a way to give back and 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 help others, and that makes you feel good about yourself and feel good feel good about what you're doing. Just like what you guys are doing with this program, I think it's I think it's it's huge, it's great, it's needed, 
And um, it's generous that you're giving it at that price. And I mean, you know, you're not looking to make anything off of this. And if people can take advantage of this, it's a huge benefit to their company and to their staff. And this is the things that we should be doing at times like this. Let's take advantage of the slower times and let's educate ourselves, improve ourselves and make ourselves better and strengthen our business because you'd be nuts if you're not thinking about how to make yourself a better business owner and make your business a better business. Well, yeah. check, your, check your calendar, Alonzo, and let me know the next uh, five o'clock slot you have open and you can come back and join us again. Cool. Be looking forward to it as well. Thanks again for yeah. having me. And hey, keep it fresh. <laughs> what are we Thanks, got? Alonzo. Right? Also, you guys, I promised that I would show some share something that we're doing in Olympia. So, Tom, I'm going to share that real quick. It'll just take a second. Okay. Maybe share screen. So, okay. So, this is three PowerPoint slides that came out of our meeting. Um, we got our we got our PPP money on Sunday. You're not sharing so this. Um, your entire screen. Maybe there, application window. There should be a button that says share screen and you click on it. It'll ask you to pick the screen you want to share and you select that screen. There you go. Bingo. That? It's okay. Yep. So this is, this is our um, eight week pay for performance plan and it's point pay. So if they earn 15 to 19 points, they'll earn a hundred dollar weekly bonus. You can see the different points. Um, and they can earn all the way up to $500 per week on this plan. So this is how they earn points. Um, how many hours did you work this week? If you earned 40, if you worked 40 or more hours, you're going to get five points. I want people working a lot. I need to fill up my schedule. I got a lot of work I need to get done. This rating here, this SE rating, this is just my internal uh, lexicon, you guys. So you guys would think of this as like your quality driven score. So what, what's your score? If you get 100% in our company, five points. And remember, it's only for a week. It's not hard to get 100% score in a week, right? But any of these other scores, you're also going to get points. What's your PPR? So our teams all track their payroll percent to revenue on um, on a daily basis. So what, what was your payroll percent to revenue? If you averaged less 40 or less for the week, you're going to get five points. Um, did you lead a team? Because we are in a, a crazy time right now, we're having all sorts of people help us with leading different teams. If you led a team, how many days did you lead a team? If you led for five days, five points. Training. Did you take training? Were you in training? Did you train somebody else? Or did you take one of our training courses that's available? If so, you're going to get five points. So this is what we are doing to um, really motivate our people to work more, work hard, and to do a heavy push for the next eight weeks. The same thing that I'm talking to you guys about that I'm doing, right? Push, push, push hard right now. Just for your own um, information, this is what we're doing in the office. How many hours? Same thing with that quality work. Um, nominations. How many nominations do people write? This is our... Um, version of like, uh, oh gosh, well, we call it our most valuable player um, thing. If you write nominations for other people over 40, um, you're going to get those five points. We work on a scrum, we work a scrum board here. Um, it's just a system of getting projects done. If you get more than 10 points done on the scrum board, five points. Um, sales. How many sales did you book for the week in the office? If you get 16 or more, Five points. And then same thing with training. So that is it. I said I would share. I did. And I wanted to make sure, let me stop sharing here. Just wanted to make sure that everybody had a chance to see that real quick. That is That's it for cool. us. Okay. So uh, five o'clock tomorrow, we'll be here. If uh, you want to sign up for the professional house uh, Cleaning training, now's the, the time to do it. Don't uh, come back here tomorrow and say it costs more and be mad at Liz because she told you. <laughs> Don't be mad at me. 
Great seeing you guys today. We'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.